And welcome to NEPA TV. It is week 16. We are getting down to the final four, both in the AAA and the pro side of the house. Tonight, we bring you the two AAA final four matches. Our first matchup is going to be the New Haven Ninjas taking on the Scottsdale Slither. Super excited to have you all with us here tonight. Also with me tonight, not just muted running the cams, but also Glean, Glean, welcome to our Wednesday night coverage. Thank you, Brutus. I mean, it has been, it's felt like forever since you and I have casted together, but um, I'm super excited. And what better time than here uh, in the conference finals, really, uh, of the AAA scene. It's going to be super excited to watch these games go down. Yeah, you're right. It's the finals. This first matchup will bring us the Western Conference champion who will get to play uh, the Eastern Conference champion coming out of our second match of the night, which will be Scranton taking on Baton Rouge. So we've got two excellent games lined up for you tonight and looking forward to getting right into the action here. Cannot do that without getting into the rules first, though, because we always talk about rules even here in the semifinals. Here at NEPA, we play four eight-minute quarters with a continuous score. The team with the most points at the end of 32 minutes of play wins the match. If we do go to overtime, we play that as a golden goal. We are, is a five-minute halftime, and each team has a timeout available per half. You will see five players on the screen. However, only four are allowed to play at any given time. And as always, NEPA tolerates no toxic or discriminatory behavior. With that out of the way, let's talk about these teams, Glean. These two teams led the Western Conference all season long. They had the two best records in that conference, New Haven Ninjas, playing the regular season at a 12-2 rate, while the Scottsdale Slither check in at 10-4. Obviously, they've won the matches they needed to win to get here to the finals. Talk to me about the roster over on Orange, which for tonight is going to be the New Haven Ninjas. Absolutely. And uh, this team has, been, like you said, been so dominant in that number one spot. Looking at Superfly, Jay Franzo, Bloop, and Raptured here, stepping in for the likes of Breezebo and Canada, who typically play that backline presence. And we have seen uh, PDR subs step up in big moments throughout the duration of the Triple A, uh, throughout the duration of the Triple A season. But Really, there is no bigger time to step up than right now because here you are in the conference finals and you're bringing in that in that sub. You've got to have the confidence in this player to be able to make things happen down the stretch and uh, to really play a stable backline presence uh, because, uh, you know, you're here in, in the very final moments of what could be a make or break moment here for the New Haven Ninjas. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Make or break. It is win or go home. Scottsdale Slither are not going to be an easy out, though. Again, they're checking in with the second best record in the Western Conference. Scottsdale Slither, while we get these teams readied up, they're muted. Checking in tonight with iFoxy, Storm, Unknown, Chewy Stack, and Ant Gas available. So we'll see which four of those five end up starting. Um, but that's the, the five players that they're going to be bringing into the arena for the night. Yeah, and this roster, you know, with the addition of Ifoxy coming in here on the later half, has just looked so dominant. Um, they really started to gel together, and then when Ifoxy came in, everything changed. This team has been uh, a phenomenal presence there on the offensive end, on the defensive end. You know, even when uh, Technowubs moved up there, 
uh, to the pro scene. They still found uh, their flow and, and they changed a couple of things up. And now they are just a great team that has a lot of great passing uh, options. They have a great number of cuts and uh, it, offensively, they look super strong. Defensively, there are, of course, no slashes either uh, and match up pretty well against this team. I don't really know the record between the two of them, uh, but it could be uh, this is going to be a great game to watch regardless. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a great matchup. So much on the line for these players. You know they want to play in that championship game on Saturday, so expecting to see both of these teams bring everything that they've got into the arena tonight. And with that, the countdown is coming to a close. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, I Foxy here for the Slither taking the first touch, and they send it down here to Chewy Stack. Have a cut coming in, but opt to not go for it. Now they go for the shop, and just off the bottom side of the post, and Unknown going to try and track this one down. There's already a stack from the Ninjas looking to trace this one. Superfly gets this one all the way forward, and look how fast that stack is already. Multiple members inside of that goal area, and Blue swing that one in off of the stack. Blue gets on one end of first two points of the game, sees the New Haven Ninjas jump out to the early lead. Our first joust advantage will go to the Scottsdale Slither. And Brutus already, these teams are so, uh, so quick down the field. Usually it takes a little bit for teams to get warmed up and get their stacks together, but you could already see multiple, uh, multiple players and multiple stacks together to chase down that distance. Now we see raptured here taking the disc on the back side remember that pdr player stepping in uh for the new haven ninjas here in the conference finals jay franzo now going to send this one forward hits bloop here on uh, a bit of a relay movement up and that's a nice three-point shot there by bloop assisted by jay franz yeah really nice shot there five points in the match all credited to bloop at this point putting in that three-pointer from 16 meters they've jumped out here to the early lead yeah, indeed, and uh, they are looking strong here in the first minute and a half of this game as now we see those Slither come out once again. They're looking for the pass down low, uh, but it will bounce into the hands of Bloop here, or, or sorry, Raptured covering that backside, and now into the hands of Supa. Supa sending it all the way up, Bloop already all the way forward, and an easy three-point shot there for Bloop to make. Already has eight points, all the scores on the board here. Yeah, Scottsdale Slither looking to push forward, get that offensive set going, but they couldn't recover on the defensive stack. Sets up an easy open goal three-pointer for Blue, who, like you said, now has all eight points in the match here two minutes in. Yeah, and Bloop, of course, is... Uh, Jucifer likes to tease me about uh, being one of my favorite players, but this guy is so good uh, just in, in that front position doing uh, so much work there on the shooting end is now hitting Bloop once again. Looking at the long three, but already I Foxy back to stop that one. Denies the shot still into Bloop's hands though as that interception came through and he just does not miss. From 30 meters out, hits another three. Bloop just continuing to help his teammates stack up assists. So two for Superfly, one for Jay Franzel, but Bloop still the only scorer in the match. They have jumped out to a quick 11-point lead. Little inside baseball information, thanks to how the spark links work for us here in production. I can tell you this New Haven Ninjas team was in quite a scrim right up really until game time here. It's kind of showing because they've come out with a hot hand while it looks like Slither is maybe just trying to still find their footing. Oh, but that missed pass. Oh, that could have been huge. They were trying for the clear. They couldn't get it through. Chewy Stack had an opportunity for a three, but dings it off the inside post. And now this one tracked down by the Ninjas. Jay Franz was sending that one deep already. The Slither have a stack, but the Ninjas are there first. Ninjas trying to drive in. No, Bloop cannot get the dunk off as the stun came through. Good denial there by the Slither. Now they have a stack together. They get the chase down. They're looking for this disc right there. Unknown gets to it. Cannot hit the three off the top side of the post. Jay Franz will get this one out on the left side of the arena trying to track this one down are multiple ninjas in the area but it will be Ankas there first here for the slither Ooh, just misses the disc did not get the grab so still in possession of the ninjas who missed the pass there uh and means that it's another turnover and unknown will handle this one so a couple of uncharacteristic errors from both teams coming in in the past couple of minutes here and bloop good pickup there to deny that shot now going to look for a reset back to the stack here at the goal going to clear this one down mid but already unknown good positioning there tries for the three-point shot can't hit it bounce no good either ant gas can't get the hands on it so it will be cleared out of the bubble bloop now trying to track this one down gets the hands there sends it over to j friends so j friends will look at it open three will try and hit it can't hit get get there quite in time but raptured a good cleanup there with the stack with super to then be able to secure the two 
And there's our first goal not scored by Bloop in this match. Quite a back and forth there. Chewy Stack's going to want that three-pointer back that just dinged off the bottom pocket rim. Looked like maybe it had a chance to go in for their first goal. They did survive an attack from the New Haven Ninjas where we had an errant pass, but still looking to find the scoreboard in this first quarter of the Scottsdale Slither. They get a tap up, and this might work out in their favor already. The disc kind of towards that orange side bubble. Inkas tracking this one down, looking at the shot. Hits that one in the bottom pocket off a sharp angle to give them the first couple of points. Yeah, that pocket unfriendly to Chewy Stack earlier that time. And Gas gets the benefit of the bounce, though. That one goes in. They've got their first two points of the match. Let's see if that can lead to a little bit of momentum for Scottsdale. Yeah, and they need it because the Ninjas team is uh, so good with a momentum in their favor. They are so good about capitalizing it and continuing to just spiral out of control as they send a reset back here to Bloop. Bloop now looking at Superfly who and then dimes him, but a good stack there from the Slither means that it's a turnover unknown. Now going to send this one forward into that orange side bubble. They have a stack together just overshooting the disc. Agas trying to track this one down, cannot get the hands on it. Jay Franzel now handling this on the side and looking at a couple of options. Sends this one down to Superfly. He's now sending this one forward. Look at they use the entire arena to move it up, but a good steal there from Chewy denies any sort of shot opportunity for the Slither, and now trying to track this one down. Multiple players uh, in the area. Jay Franzo, their first. Going to look at a potentially a clear, potentially a shot. No, gets stunned out. Good stun there from the Slither to now get this one moved forward. I Foxy has a 1v1 if he wants to take it. Has another player moving up for a cut as well. Tries to hit Chewy stack, but just off. Chewy also can't track it down off the bounce. So Jay Franzo gets the recollect here and is going to look for the clear right back out onto the other side. Just into that trap area is now ifoxy will take this right back for the slither and back and forth we go between these two teams as no one can really get a good handle on the disc right now eventually picked up here by chewy stack three on the way but can't hit it picked up here once again by Ankas cannot get the shot off as well or cannot hit the shot at least and jay franzo will try and get this one right back out and slither already so fast to recover here on the defensive end learning from their past mistakes and trying to get that out gets stunned though jay friends now on the recovery and looking to move this one forward here for the ninjas now drawing to try and duck but a good stun from unknown gets it turned right back around and man oh man it is tough here for either team to try and get a foothold i foxy tracking this one down uh, and we'll get there first now going to send this one in forward to chewy should we going to look at a shot oh great save there by jay to deny that one gets the clear on the side sorry the pass over to bloop here on the side now lining up that three from deep cannot hit it just high and the stun coming through means that it is another turnover into the favor of i foxy and it is just back and forth here brutus it is back and forth, and I tell you, that says a lot about what the Scottsdale Slither have figured out. Those first couple of minutes, Bloop just absolutely went off, came out with a fury. Oh. But it does seem like the Scottsdale Slither defense is starting to figure something out. They've just got to dial in some of these shots. They've had lots of scoring opportunities that have sailed just wide or dinged off the rim. If they can get that piece figured out, they're playing a much more even match now. Ant Gas and Chewy Stack doing a nice job with a midfield stack that's finally found a way to slightly slow down this New Haven Ninjas attack. And just as I say that, Jay Franzel puts in another three with 30 seconds left here to go. But Scottsdale Slither are trending in the right direction with what they're doing defensively. They've got to figure out how to turn it into points. Yeah, I could not agree more. Their stack has looked fantastic as of late and uh, really has been quick on a lot of pressure in multiple areas of the arena is now oh bloop a fantastic steal of the qb there to get the three point shot off uh, i believe that was i foxy with a duck coming in but just could not get low enough boy and that is going to close out the quarter with consecutive three pointers from the new haven ninjas so just as the slither were starting to figure things out defensively they give up a couple of easy ones there to end out the quarter 17 points is going to be the deficit scottsdale slither are walking into when we get into the second quarter with that we are going to take it to a quick word from our sponsor one american with a burning desire to save the world from high prices he is the stuff man that saved the world he is looking to destroy high prices. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Kawasaki. One man strapped to a 2021 Terex KRX 1000. The stunt man that saved the world. Get your favorite Kawasaki motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. And, and welcome, welcome back. back. Yeah, welcome back. Nepa TV's <laughs> AAA Western Conference Championship game. Uh, great first quarter. Very, very fast start for the New Haven Ninjas. 
They jumped out to an early 11-0 lead. We did see the Scottsdale Slither start to step things up, particularly on the defensive end. But if they're going to get back into this clean, they have got to find a way to start connecting on some of those shots that were sailing just wide. So we'll see what adjustments they make to try and create, uh, you know, higher percentage scoring opportunities here in the second quarter. Yeah, absolutely. They just need to uh, hone in the shots a little bit more. They're placing them close to the post, which is a good thing. But sometimes on the open net, you know, it's just not ideal. A good joust here means that they will win the disc first. Ifoxy now going to look at a pass up here to Unknown. Now going to try and forward this one off to Chewy Stack. Just missing the hands there. Ankast trying to get the hands on it, but can't quite. Ooh, good pick up here from Unknown, but cannot get a shot off. Denied immediately. The Ninja's getting this one cleared right back out. Good pick up there from Ankast. Turns it right back around here for the slither, but... Uh, just into the hands of Jay Francel here on the backside. Now sent forward here by Ratchard. Quick stack in here. Loop looking at a shot. I good steal there by I Foxy. Going to send this one across. Two E stack looking at it. Open three. Tried to dial it in. Cannot hit it. They have the pickup. No, cannot get the shot off. The defense recovers in time to be able to shut that one down. Now Jay Francel with the pickup gets the send in deep on the opposing side. They already have one player down there. Great stud there on the other end. What defense we're seeing here for both teams as they can test for this disc over and over again. And bloop a three there just as the goal was left open. Goal is left open. Bloop has been absolutely on fire this entire match. Had a three-pointer there at the end of the first quarter. Now here in the first minute of the second, drains another one. 22-2 now on the back of 17 points from Bloop. I, yeah, I mean, that defensive... Uh, just the defensive relay from both teams was so impressive. Ooh, that shot could have gone in had it not been for the accursed nugget block that got in the way, but a good stack here from the midfield means that it's back in the Slither's hands. Oh, good shot there from Antgas set up there at the nest. Antgas gets another two points on the board. They desperately need to find some scoring. Antgas does it there, assisted by I Foxy. They've now got four total for the game. We're two minutes here into the second quarter. Yeah, and it's good to see that they are able to get these plays off because that was something that they were sorely missing before in that first quarter. And now uh, Bloop going to try and move this one forward, hit Superfly in the tunnel, going to pass this one down here to Raptor. Raptor gets it over uh, on the ceiling and will get it over to Bloop once again. Now driving in. Oh, tried to hit J-Friends on the cut, could not quite. Raptor now here on the wall looking at perhaps a shot. No, a cross to uh, Supa, Supa trying to back this one out, but stunned already. The defense marking Bloop there on the offensive end now going to send this one in deep or a teammate cannot get to the hands so uh, a turnover here and jay friends now going to look at a clear on the top side or a pass to the top side superfly now going to send this one in deep through on that clear and uh, multiple players are going to try and track this one down it is uh, unknown there first but immediately stunned by jay friends so good leech uh good presence to then get that stun off for the easy two And we are getting words that iFoxy crashed out, so it does look like we're going to see a new lineup here for the Slither. Yeah, Storm coming in. You know, we did we didn't quite mention it, but Storm also being uh, a PDR player there, I believe, uh, stepping in as kind of that fifth spot as iFoxy is now uh, out of the arena. It's a good pickup here from Unknown, trying to get that one sent in, but unfortunately, the bounce on the bow tie means that it turned right back around here for the Ninjas. Good tap there by I believe it was Unknown once again. Uh, managing to get a steal, but already it gets cleared right back out here by the ninjas on to that blue trap. Unknown now with the disc will get then through, but Jay Franzo here on the back end still able to pick that one up quite easily. Gets it over to Superfly, who is now juking around a little bit, looking at a couple of options. Ops to send it back on a reset. Jay Franzo now handling it here, looking at a couple of passes. Hits Rapture down below. Rapture driving in. Ooh, gets it off the head of Storm there for the two. Yeah, the Slither had brought all four players back into the bubble, really had them pretty tight there against the goal, but that uh, shot off the head is going to connect, give them another two points. They've stretched this lead back out to 22. Again, still looking for the Slither to find some consistent offense if they're going to crawl back into this one. Yeah, and Gas now handling this one. Tries to get it down to a teammate. Ooh, does actually hit Chewy Stack there. Off the bounce, very good for them. As now they're looking to try and drive this one in. Storm here handling. Tries to hit Chewy, but cannot get the pass there. Uh, bounced off the shield. So now a long clear here for the Ninjas. Uh, while they get their stack together, Bloop with the pickup. Bloop with a shot. Another three falls for Bloop. I didn't count all the threes. I feel like that's at least four for Bloop. Maybe six. 
He's got 20 points now uh, to go along with five from Jay Franzel and two from Raptured. So uh, really nice play here out of the ninjas. I was not even paying attention to how many points he has. My goodness. Yeah. Um, and, and Kaz gets this one over to Unknown. Uh, Unknown now going to try and get across a, a pass across, but cannot quite hit the teammate. Bounces off that cloud. Geo Susupa will try and get a clear through. Uh, does manage to get it all the way down. Already Unknown tracking that one down. Blue or Bloop with a fantastic steal. Now trying to drive, but immediately stunned once again. Unknown getting a bit of revenge there, and now going to get this one cleared right back out to the other side. Multiple. Uh, it will be super fly to chase this one down and get it across to Jay Franzel, who now uh, can take his time if he wants to, can walk it up. Ops for a boop shot, in fact, and will try and hit it off the top side. Can't quite get there. Bloop getting stunned out here just as he got the pick up and now a clear through from the Scottsdale Slither. Uh, will find its way kind of in their own zone as it didn't find its way all the way through. Chewy Stack with a tap can't quite get it through as well. And now a reset coming through means that the New Haven Ninjas once again retain possession. And uh, another shot coming through here from Raptured, but cannot hit the three off the backboard. And Unknown now will try and get another clear through. Uh, just these clears are not quite finding their way through every single time for the Slither. And that's hurting them in some areas as now Unknown's going to try and pick this one up, try and walk this one up. Has a back pass here, the reset, just a bit high for the teammate. So now back into the hands of the ninjas, Bloop looking at a clear through. Raptured, nice pickup. Raptured with the three, easy save there from Chewy Stack to now deny this one. And uh, again, try and get a clear through, but already the ninjas are there. Yeah, easy save, but hard work uh, getting that stack back was a nice job by the Slither to recover on that one and actually put a goalie in a position because it looked like that was going to be a breakaway three for Blue, but that defensive stack recovers in time and denies, but here they're Whoa. on the defensive end again. And after an initial stop, Jay Franzel's going to follow that one up. So goalie did the best, kept the first shot out of the goal, but Jay Franzel there to clean things up. That was an impressive save by Storm, but just could not fully uh, deny Jay France as he flew his way through the entire of the entirety of the goal. And uh, now sitting at a 27 point game and I Foxy back in the arena could mean uh, a different look here for uh, the Scottsdale Slither as Storm handles this one on the side. We'll try and send this one up to Ant Gas now looking to turn this one around and get some points on the board for the Slither. Chewy Stack handling this one on the front end looking at a cross pass for Unknown. Unknown going right back to Ant Gas but just uh, Ant Gas was stunned out and just went past the hands there. So a turn around here. A shot. No, Super can't hit it. Raptured cannot also hit it off the backboard. J Friends will now handling this one on the top side. Juking around J Friends. Looking for a shot perhaps. We'll drive in and hit the two. Wow, and on a steep angle coming off of the near side shoulder there, Jay Franzel finds a way to put that one in. On the near side of the goal, he sneaks it in, stretches their point total out to 33. We've got 30 seconds left to go here in the half. Indeed, and the Slither just got to find something to break the momentum. They just got to keep their heads in it. Good headbutt here for my Foxy. Moves the, this down the field quite, rather quickly, and uh, Inkass now going to send this one across. Cannot hit a teammate quite yet. Chewy Sack now driving. There's the shot that they needed, the little bit of momentum, breaking the ice just before the end of the half. Yeah, and Chewy Stack has had several shots throughout this match. Good to see getting some points on the board there. So two for Chewy Stack, four for Ant Gas as we go into halftime here. Uh, we'll be back with some analysis, but first we'll take a word from our sponsors. As you know by now, NEPA is and has been going Web3 and issuing NFTs as a way to reward the community. Anyone who claims one of these NFTs is eligible for future raffles and giveaways that are conducted throughout the year. They're free to claim and all you have to do is fill out a claim form that can be found at www.nepavrpro.com nft 
We've got some great stuff planned and you do not want to miss out. So get over to www.nepavrpro.com slash NFT. And with that, I am going to welcome you back to our big St. Charles Auto and Motorsports halftime show as we take a look at what we saw here in the first half. Glean, the statistics, very one-sided so far. The play hasn't always necessarily been as the Slither, who found themselves down early in 11 nothing lead, did start to find some stuff that was working, particularly defensively to some degree in the latter parts of the first quarter, but just have not yet found the offense. What have you seen so far? For me, it's really really been about the passes. I've known the Slither to be a, a very pass-oriented team, and you can see that they're trying for these ideas. They're trying to get passes up the teammates. They're trying to hit each other at the shoulder, uh, find these uh, cross passes to one another, but they're just not hitting with them. They're just not connecting at multiple instances, and it's really hurting their offense. They cannot move about the way that they want to. They cannot break down the defense how they want to, and they're therefore forced into trying to work around a, a clear and boost in which they're not quite winning on the offensive end. On the defensive end, they are doing quite a bit uh, to that end because, like you mentioned, they are able to get back and they were figuring things out defensively, but just not quite able to figure it out there offensively to get things working. Yeah, and I don't think we can talk about statistics without talking about what Bloop's been able to do so far. Bloop came out on absolute fire, scored the first eight points of the match. As a reaction, the Slither went with a little bit more aggressive midfield stack. Unfortunately, what that did was leave a goal open and Bloop able to capitalize with some more three-pointers, getting those open goal opportunities. What do you think the Slither can do to try and slow a player down like Bloop who's just firing on all cylinders? Well, it's really about cutting off the pass option to get it up to Bloop because a lot of the times those open looks are facilitated by his fellow teammates in uh, Jay Frenzel and Superfly being able to hit him uh, with a couple of quick passes up the arena to then be able to take that open three. So if you cut off those pass options uh, or you just pounce on the clear before it gets all the way through to Bloop, uh, you essentially shut down that entire play uh, concept or that, that entire disc movement concept up there. And uh, if they can do that, they can also look to then push it a numbers advantage on the offensive end because Blue will have to f will be forced to float back solo, uh, which is much slower than your uh, conventional re-grab in order to be able to get back uh, to the other side of the arena. So uh, just making sure that those clears uh, don't go through, preventing those at any opportunity to then push up could be a great defensive and offensive scheme here for the Scottsdale Slither. Meanwhile, the Slither, like you said, they've had trouble connecting on passes. They've had a couple of uh, back passes that were errant. They have gotten some shots, though, and connected on enough of them, but they're getting close. Mentally, how do you think that's playing for them right now, that when even when they do create opportunities, it's not necessarily translating into points in the board, and how do they approach the second half differently? You know, you just got to put it out of your mind, Brutus. I mean, it, as a player, you got to just have that focus and say, okay, I missed this shot. I cannot afford to be afraid to... I, I cannot afford to be afraid to take that shot again because uh, those shots only are open for so long. You only have such a window of opportunity to be able to make it. And uh, whenever it, the option is present, you have to be uh, you have to have the confidence to be able to take that shot or else uh, you'll continue to go down these points over and over again unless you can keep up some sort of miraculous defense, which is so hard to do against what what is one of the top offenses in the league. Yeah, and they've certainly uh, been the top offense tonight, just absolutely uh, uh, popping off in all regards. Again, 20 points for Bloop in that first half, and and I think six of those were three-pointers, if I remember right. So um, Something like some that. Of those, some of those open goals, but uh, you know, not necessarily all of them, but what they are doing to get the disc forward to Bloop, like you talked about, is absolutely working. Um, It'd be really interesting to see if Chewy Stack and Andgas, who are playing that midfield stack, can do something to break that up, intercept those passes like you talked about to try and slow Bloop down here in the second half. Absolutely. And to their credit, they were doing a phenomenal job of uh, applying a lot of pressure in that the end of the first quarter into the second. And that's a great headbutt with that stack coming out. Uh, they have a chance to try and track this one down. I can't guess they're on the backside, able to get to it. I Foxy look at a shot, but loses the handle there on the disc and a turnover here 
as Superfly gets to that one. Bloop cannot get the grab, so instead Ant Gas will retain this for the Scottsdale Slither. They have another offer, uh, offensive push here. As now Chewy Stacks look at a shot, but just a little bit close to the post again. Uh, it cannot connect with the two-point shot, and Ant Gas trying to get there, but immediately stunned. And Bloop now looking at an open three will opt to send it to Jay Franz. So Jay Franz on the shot hits the three just as the goalie recovers. Yeah, goalie tried to get back on that one. Again, we know that in order to try and overcome a deficit like that, a team has to push forward. They did that there. Bloop that time pushes things forward to Franzel, though, and gets the shot just as that goalie's kind of recovering, but really not back in position to make the save. So they get another three-pointer out of that. Oh, what a pick there. Great man defense from the Ninjas. Jay Franzel now trying to run this one up and uh, will run up the score indeed. Puts them here at a 20, or sorry, a 33-point lead. Uh, I promise I can math. Yeah, math. That's hard. Uh, that's 15 total points now for Jay Franzel. So Jay Franzel and Blue putting on quite a show. They're getting off to a hot start here in the second half, which is not what the Slither needed when they were already down by so much at halftime. Let's see what they can do with this joust advantage. All right, I know I'm going to send this one across here to Chewy Stack. They're opting for a little bit of a slower rollout, which I do like, trying to just get those passes locked in and make sure they can break the stack on the front side. Ankas, long three, hits it! from 31 meters out and that's a nice little boost of confidence there if you're the Scottsdale Slither. Yeah, boy, just when they needed a little bit of a boost there, you know, mentally, just to kind of get this thing firing. And Gas dials that one in all the way from 31 meters. Really clean shot there. Finds the, the far side pocket, excuse me. Dials that one in. They've now got nine points on the match and hopefully a momentum builder. Yeah, Bloop now sending this one over to Superfly. And remember, this is where that defensive stack in the midside was doing so well. A bunch of stuns come through, and eventually it's Bloop that comes away with it. Looking to line up a three just over the hands of Ifoxy. Don't get him that lane. He hits yet another three here. Putting Bloop at how many points? How many points? I, you got it right there in front of you. Uh, yeah, that's 23 points now for Bloop. Uh, Aye. Yeah, yeah. Quite a <laughs> night. And yeah, it's just got to be so frustrating. We talked about that Ant Gas Chewy stack, uh, midfield stack. It looked like they were going to create a turnover, but they can't quite get the disc cleared over to the orange side. And it ends up being another three pointer for Bloop. Uh, again, the Slither opting for this rollout where they were playing a little bit more defensively with the disc, and it was looking really good, but just the forced clear meant that it turns into another turnover. Bloop lining up another three, don't hit another one. Oh, he finally misses after what has been uh, a ridiculous number of threes, and now uh, this one back into Rapture's hands after the bounce. We'll find uh, Jay Franzel here on the ceiling looking to drive this one in. Has a super fly there on the backboard. If he opts for it, we'll just try and go 1v4. Almost did it, but instead off the inside of the post there and uh, unknown will now get the clear through and the slither now going to try and get their hands on this disc if they can inside of that orange bubble but already two ninjas back to recover this one jay franzo setting this one across to superfly forwarding it to raptured and raptured looking at an open three himself we'll try and take the shot but good recovery by the slither to deny that one get it turned right back around as they continue to look for points on the board trying to break that 10 point mark and uh it will be jay franzo to pick this one up in the midfield after a clear couldn't find its way all the way through after a bounce on the geo jay france still juking around hits uh raptured here on the side will now look at a pass up to a bloop the bounce not favorable so uh bloop still managed to pick it up but immediately stunned here by the slither another clear just not completely all the way through but they do have players in the area to try and track this one down still into the hands of bloop somehow um <laughs> he's just been all over the arena here tonight and now hitting super uh, super with a three Ooh, just off the outside of the post so uh the new haven ninja is not able to get a number of shots and on this offensive possession and now cleared right back out here for the slither uh they have uh ink gas there in the area trying to get there uh with a little bit of speed but immediately stunned here by bloop now looking to get a clear through uh get stunned out here by ifoxy and now uh with perhaps a numbers advantage they can look to try and press this one and ifoxy gets it over to Ancas. Ancas driving oh just off the inside of the post that has been so many dings here for the slither unknown can't get a shot off as he gets the recovery and uh right back into the hands of the ninjas blue clearing this one right back out to the other side Cleared out and is going to leave an open goal that this time Raptured will find the back of for yet another three-pointer. The New Haven Ninjas uh, have been scoring in bunches and they've been scoring by three-pointers, which is why we're already up to 45, minute, 45 points Excuse me for New Haven here with three minutes to go in the third quarter. 
it is rough here for the Slither. They have tried to, almost everything it feels like, and they just cannot connect with it. Uh, they get the send up here to uh, Unknown, and Unknown looking at a backward shot. Again, just the bounces are not favorable for the Slither here tonight. Uh, it's, you know, sometimes the arena is just like that. It, it just can't hit it on the backboard. And now Supa will send this one down uh, and try and look at uh, a couple of stacks coming in. It will be Angas now to get the recovery and look at a clear, but immediately stunned out here. Bloop chasing this one down. Bloop looking at it in cross pass over to Jay Franzo. Jay Franzo driving, tries the shot, but gets stunned out. Good dive there from the goalie to deny that one. Ifoxy now with a stacked teammate on top of him going to look for a clear. Ooh, done there by Supa. Supafly will get the uh, send in to Ankas, and Ankas clearing this one right back out for the slither into that mid zone. Pick up here from Unknown, just trying to get it out of that mid that mid side and trying to look at a shot. No. Picked up here by Jay Friends. Let's see, deny that one. Gets it cleared right back down. Rapture handling this one for the ninjas on the side. Gets a send in here to Bloop. Bloop looking to drive in. Maybe 1v2. Yes. We'll get the send in on, her, on the two. Eight meter two, in fact. Uh, to put them up here 47 to nine. And brings Bloop up to 25 points total on the game. You talked about it. Uh, this is definitely a game of skill. Let's make no mistake about it, but a little bit of luck can go a long way. The Scottsdale Slither, when they have created turnovers and they've looked to get cleared out, I tell you, these geodes are just jumping in the way of the disc. There's another one there they try and send up the far side tunnel and they're just going to get a bad bounce of it like you said sometimes the arena just plays that way but it seems like the slither haven't had anything going in their direction here tonight once again there they get a stack going in the right direction but that disc catches the far side wall and ends up being a bad bounce yeah, it's felt like there's been a number of bounces that you just haven't been able to get a good track of because they've been a little bit awkward. And I don't know that I've seen so many rim bounces be so unfortunate for a team before. And uh, this one getting cleared right back out here for the ninjas means that Jay Franzel handles the disc on here on the ceiling. Looking at a three-point shot if he wanted to take it. It was open, but now opting to just send it over to Rapture. Rapture getting the stun on one good ender to then provide the two. And that two points stretches the lead all the way out to 40 points. So, Jucifer, I know you like the uh, first to 40 rule. How about a 40-point lead rule? Uh, New, New Haven Ninjas are just having their way tonight. That time, that two-pointer stretches them all the way out to 49 points as we go into the last 20 seconds here of the third quarter. Yeah, ooh, a miss there by the backside means that it will be unknown to score a quick two here for the Slither in response to that shot there by Raptured. Yeah, nice goal there by Unknown, able to collect that disc and put that one in from just a meter out. Brings their points up to 11, and that is going to do it here for the third quarter as time will expire before they make it out of the tube. So with that, we will take it to our last intermission of this match. And welcome back to NEPA TV and our Western Conference Championship AAA matchup here, which has been so far a very one-sided affair. The New Haven Ninjas firing on all cylinders tonight, but you have got to love the fight. Glean that we're seeing out of the Scottsdale Slither. Unknown getting two points there to close out that third quarter. So they're continuing to the fight. They're continuing to play the game the way that it's meant to be played. But I tell you, 38 points is going to be a lot to overcome in just eight minutes of play. Yeah, uh, I think it's still mathematically possible, but uh, you're looking at, what, 13 threes? Uh, and I don't know. Well, there has been one three that I can at least think of. The one uh, long three by Ankas fell uh, for this team in order to make uh, that odd number of points there. But uh, for a team that has just not been able to hit on that three-point shot all night, it could be really, really hard to make that happen. <laughs> like just Yeah. It certainly can, but you know what? This this game is just meant to be played the way it's meant to be played, and that's what you're seeing out of the Slither. They're going to continue to try and put points on the board. They're going to continue to, to, to try and make themselves better and their team better. So look for them to continue with an aggressive style of play here in the fourth quarter, maybe take some chances, maybe take a little bit of risk as they do there with the headbutt off of the neutral joust, but unable to collect there initially. But they do get a possession here around the orange bubble, but can't quite get things together. 
Yeah, and it's been really rough for the Slither because they've won that initial jest every single time, but they just have not been able to convert it into points whenever uh, they get a hold of that disc. Because now J-Friends holds it here on the side, uh, looking to try and drive this one in. Perhaps we'll try and take the 1v3, but cannot fully score. It will be Ifoxy to get this one cleared out as multiple players did stun uh, J-Friends. And now uh, this disc just loose once again, picked up here by Agas, going to look at a cross pass, hits Ifoxy there on the top side, takes the shot in and puts the two points on the board. Last two points of the third quarter, and now the first two points of the fourth quarter are going to go to the side of the Slither. So I'm getting a little bit of momentum here, getting consecutive goals. Let's see if they can keep it up and continue to put points on the board. Indeed, and uh, uh, now with the New Haven Ninjas rolling out, Blue handling this one on the ceiling, tries to get a pass across, does hit Superfly here now, and looking uh, at... Raptured, Raptured now over to J Franzo. A good rollout here from the ninjas means that they are just continuously moving forward. B the missed past the bloop there off the ceiling means it could be a turnover. Uh, instead, back into Raptured's hands. The reset back to Superfly is good, and now they're looking uh, to just play with some time here, perhaps. Perhaps look for one more or a few more shots as J Franzo gets the shot saved by Ifoxy. Good, good hands there in the goal. Uh, as now bloop. Sending this one back to Supa, who is going to drive in once again. The goalie is stunned as they're looking for the shot, but no, cannot get it all the way through. Jay Franzel on a cleanup, though, in that hit stun immunity is able to get the two points on the board. Two points takes their point total above 50 for the match. It's now 51 to 13 with six minutes to play. Yeah, I, I think we I have technically run out of that mathematical time now. But, you know, the, like you said, the teams will continue to play. And, oh, Chewy Stack did get a hand on there for a second. As Superfly will now send this one in deep for uh, just any sort of players to track this one down. Jay Francis actually might get their first, does, in fact, get their first over Chewy Stack. Now going to send this one over to Blue Blue looking at a two-point sh shot, but cannot hit it. Jay Franzel going to just back this one up, survey the opportunities that are there, and uh, sends it across here to Bloop Bloop, getting it pocket picked by Ankas. Good steal defensively, but already a pickup here from Supa means that they will turn this one right back around. Jay Franzel jumping one, Jay Franzel off the <laughs> shield will hit that two and bring their point lead back up to 40. Yeah, another really nice goal there by Jay Franzel, who's he's really had a bit of a hot hand here in the second half. So Blue Poo had 20 points in the first half, only five here in the second. But Jay Franzel has really popped off now, has 19 points to go along with four assists and four saves. Yeah, I, I forget who it was there in the chat. I wish I could scroll back, but I'm a bit busy commenting. The game is now Superfly gets a nice pick here. Going to look for a shot. Bloop uh, will send that one in off the assist and another three points on the board. But uh, my, my thought process before was uh, even if you slow down Bloop, then Jay Frenzel gets hot. If you slow down Jay Frenzel, then Superfly gets hot. And, you know, it just, it just the, the kind of the, the rapid... Uh, succession of, of scoring and, and hot hands here on this New Haven Ninjas team is is really tough to deal with if you're any opponent. Yes, indeed, they have been on quite a tear. They finished the regular season at 12 and two. Glean those losses. We're in the first two weeks, so this oh. is a team that is on a 13 game winning streak coming into this match. It's looking Ooh. more and more like they're going to stretch it to a 14 game winning streak. They have absolutely been firing all cylinders. These teams did meet twice in the regular season. The last matchup, August 11th, was just a two-point game. New Haven did walk away with a victory, but it was just 40-38. to 38. So you know Slither knows how to play with this team, but sometimes it is just not your night, or in this case, maybe it just was the New Haven Ninjas' night. But they came out, opened up an early 11-0 lead, and just never looked back. Yeah, and it is just uh, continued to be that way. And Chewy Stack looking for that long three, just could not hit it there off the bounce. Ifoxy now lining up a shot, tries off the shoulder. Ooh, almost had that angle, but uh, now back into the hands here of Unknown, who will score that two in the top side of the goal. Yeah, nice shot there looking for that top pocket. Ifoxy feeding the disc in. Unknown sends that one in from five meters out. They've got 15 points on the game. And again, like we talked about, just love the pride that these players are playing with, continuing to fight here till the very end, uh, looking to get better uh, and learn what they can about the game in a night that just wasn't dialed in for them tonight. Yeah, Bloop now handling this one for the New Haven Ninjas, going to walk this forward. Ooh, good pick there by Unknown. Gets the hands on the disc, gets stunned out by Bloop. Bloop winning the 1v2 here against the two players, but Unknown, good stun. Good shot there to bring them the three points. 
Yeah, good steal there. Puts it in from three points out. Unknown now got seven points on the match uh, to go along with what looks like could be the Stunny Award. 57 stuns for Unknown to go along with those seven points. My goodness. <laughs> That's a busy night. Those, those are some hands for sure. The headbutt <laughs> comes out here from the ninjas. Uh, gets picked up here by iFoxy going to send this one down uh, into that orange side bubble. Already they have the stack together and gas. A nice little slam there in the back side to put them up here to 20. Yeah, Juice for you know it. Stunny Ward. There you go. We'll let this play out. Who knows? Maybe somebody can come up with 30 stuns in the last two minutes. I don't know what mathematical possibilities exist for stuns, but yeah. Looking pretty good for Unknown right now. Maybe pull a juice fur and sit on the legs and stun one particular person after the rest of the game is now. It will be Unknown here for the Slither. They get the hands on the disc. Uh, they're looking to try and drive this one forward. They have uh, Unknown here on the ceiling. Gets the cross pass. Already the stun comes through. Ooh, good hands there from Zupa to deny what could have been a shot off the head of a teammate. Uh, this pass coming in to Ankas means that the goal is open. Oh, and could not quite hit the shot. And Unknown looking to try. Actually drops the disc. May have been off the head. Head of a teammate and now uh, will be unknown to pick this one up. Gets it across to iFoxy. iFoxy driving. No, can't hit the shot. iFoxy off the top post and Gas can't get it in either. Good save from Raptured to deny another two points and now looking to line this one up. Bloop on a long three. Oh my, threads the needle for another one. Bloop closing out the match much like starting the match. Again, first eight points of the game. Now another three-pointer as we go into the final minute of play. Bloop has just been there throughout this match on the scoring end. Uh, to go along with Jay Franzel, those two players have been quite dominant tonight. 50 points now between the two of them. Really? 50 between the two of them? That is a night for the, the two offensive powerhouses of this team. Another three. Another one. Just rack it up, DJ Khaled. Another one at 37 meters out. And the kid just does not miss. Yeah. Yeah, really been dialed in. I, I think uh, there was one miss in the third quarter, and, and you even commented on it because it's like, wow, that was a miss, and we just haven't seen Blue do that tonight. So, uh, yeah, his, <laughs> or his scoring percentage or his shooting percentage tonight has been absolutely on fire. Oh, nice little pass there. Oh, what a save by Raptured. My goodness, in the 1v2 situation, gets the hands on it. But iFoxy, good stun, good slam to bring the total here to 62 to 22. A strong case uh, for a championship there, if ever there was one, as uh, the New Haven Ninjas will win this conference finals. Yes, indeed. Hats off to both teams. Really love the way Scottsdale Slither closed out, particularly that fourth quarter. They really stepped up their game. That was their highest scoring quarter of the game. So played the season all the way till the end. Very, very impressive. But it's the New Haven Ninjas who are going to be crowned Western Conference champions in the AAA bracket. They have punched their ticket to the finals. Indeed. And if you're on the Eastern conference side watching that game or perhaps they're not if they're warming up but uh, if they get it if they if they get word of uh kind of that score line there uh as, as we're gonna jump over to that game in just a moment but you got to think that's got to be uh, a bit scary there as you're contemplating not only this game but the next game having to face against this team uh, yes, definitely going to be a formidable challenge uh, for whoever earns the right here to play these new ninjas who, who just played a near perfect game. Again, they jumped out to that early 11 point lead and then just continued with the onslaught. If it wasn't Jay Franzel feeding bloop for the three pointer, it was Jay Franzel taking the three pointer themselves. They really racked up points in a hurry because of their effectiveness shooting that three. Yeah, absolutely crazy. I didn't even see that Bloop had 34 points. My goodness. Uh, that is just a ridiculous number. Uh, Jay Frenzel there with 19, of course, and Raptured with the 7. Raptured, of course, a great shout out to him for stepping up here in this game. Again, that PDR sub able to uh, make an impact here on the game, sitting there at the assists leader. Uh, there with the five assists, seven points on the board, three saves, one steal. Uh, definitely had fingerprints on this game, and uh, what a way to make a, a name for yourself here. Yeah, make a name indeed, uh, and also give yourself a chance to win a very coveted award. Uh, so, Glean, you just took a look at the statistics, but at the end of the day, we do have to come up with a Stuntman Trophy. Uh, Holtzauer Auto and Motorsports sponsoring that Stuntman Trophy. We've got to choose just one player out of two who 
both played fantastic matches tonight. Who you got for the stunt man? Yeah, I mean, uh, like it, it's really hard because on one hand you have Jay Francis just across the arena did a, a fantastic job, nineteen points here, four assists, four saves. Uh, you know, the presence on both the defensive and the offensive end was fantastic. Bloop did get a couple of steals in there, I believe, but uh, the consistency from Bloop to, to always make shots down the stretch, you know, you're like how how reassuring must it be as a player, as a teammate, to know that you have a guy that's going to make almost every single three-pointer you give him uh, there down the floor. So it is it is really hard to decide between these two. You know, do you go with the more balanced player? Do you go with the guy that is just so consistent on that offensive end? Uh, and really helped spiral this game out of control. Yeah, it is not an easy call to make, and yet here you are on the spot. You've got to choose one. Oh, I've got to choose one. That's so hard. Oh, man. It, it did, you know, it, I just, as as fantastic as Jay Franzel's scoreline is, I cannot ignore 34 points here from Bloop. Uh, it, of course, set up by teammates across the board, but 34 points it is mind boggling in almost any echo arena game i'd let alone just a, a nepa regulated game it is uh a, the the mark the hallmark of a, a fantastic offensive player it is something just i attribute to his, his just his consistency there with the shots yeah the consistency was all there i can't agree with you it is so hard to ignore those assists and saves from jay franzel and there's no way that bloop gets to those 34 points if it wasn't for what jay franzel was doing to set that up as much as i love going to a twitch vote though i'm actually going to agree with you and here's why i'm going to go very specifically back to the start of the game where bloop came out on absolute fire had two three-pointers and a two-pointer to combine for the first eight points of the game before I believe it was uh, uh, Raptured who got that fourth goal. But Bloop just came out on absolute fire, set the tone of the match that they never looked back from. And Bloop continued that scoring up to never give Scottsdale even a little bit of breathing room to get back into this. But if I go back and look at the first two minutes of this match, it was the Bloop show. And that was it. Like they essentially put this game away in the first half of the first quarter because Bloop came out on such absolute fire again. Uh, Bloop, you're going to get the Stuntman trophy. I feel like you need to like timeshare it with Jay Franzel, though, because I think Bloop uh, would attest that uh, a lot of those assists uh, that led to Bloop scoring came from Jay Franzel, and Jay Franzel was getting it done all over the arena. But yeah, I think Bloop and the way this match started and the daggers he was throwing early really just made this what ended up being a very easy win here for the New Haven Ninjas, not to take anything away from the Scottsdale Slither and their efforts, but this was never a close match because the bloop got them off to such a hot start. Yeah, getting off the right foot is one of the best things that you can do in the Echo Arena, and right there, you know, a great demonstration of that and being able to then capitalize on that throughout the duration of the game and carry that through uh, was fantastic. So, uh, our... Uh, Stuntman Award there goes to Bloop, and we have one more game in front of us, Brutus. Uh, we have to go, jump over to the Eastern Conference for that finals uh, before we sign off here tonight. Yeah, cannot wait to see who is going to take on these New Haven Ninjas. We are going to have an interview here with the New Haven Ninjas before we get to that Eastern Conference Championship game that will be coming up shortly. So we will take a brief break here while we jump into the interview room, and then we'll be right back with you. And then we will be back with that Scranton versus Baton Rouge match following these interviews. So do not go far. We'll be right back.
And I welcome you back to NEPA TV's post-game coverage. We are lucky enough to be joined by the Western Conference champion, New Haven Ninjas, who just put on quite a show. Team, welcome. Thanks for giving us an exciting match to watch and for giving us some time here uh, for the interview. Congrats. Woo! Yeah! That's yeah. Nice. <laughs> now, we were talking about it during the broadcast. You finished the season 12-2. and two. Those first two losses coming in the first two weeks, so you have now won 14 straight to punch your ticket here into these AAA finals. Wait for real? How? Yeah. How? Yeah. How do you pull that together? What is it? Do you think you've been doing as a team to go on that kind of a tear? Um, um we got an amazing captain Jay Frenzel. Um, we got good teammates. We've built our chemistry pretty fast, and you know we keep a cool head whenever we get in the game. So we always have a good mindset into it. So. I think that's kind of what brought us um, to the finals. Wise words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, our Eastern Conference Championship game that's coming up here. You'll be facing either Scranton or Baton Rouge. I'm sure you'll have a vested interest in how that match plays out so you can start sizing up who your competition will be. Uh, we had a very difficult discussion about where to go with the Stuntman Trophy tonight. <laughs> Bloop, I'm going to congratulate you because you walked away with 34 points and specifically uh, the first eight points of the match is what Glean and I were talking about. And you guys just never really looked out to that. Jay Fransel, you were very much in the conversation. Uh, plenty of points to go along with assists and saves as well. So your team talked about what a great job you do as a captain. You were definitely setting up a lot of Bloop's goals, but we did hand that trophy over to Bloop. But Jay Fransel, I would like to hear from you what it is that you do to get the team organized. And then how did you come into the arena? So hot 11 to nothing um, lead in the first four minutes of the game. And it never got closer than that. I mean, I think the best thing, I mean, it's kind of weird. Cause we never like, we never practice. We never scrim, but we're always playing on our own. We're always playing with each other in privs. So like, in a different way, we're always playing with each other, getting chemistry and all that. And I think this just helps us in the long run, even if we aren't practicing directly. And Wise words. it just kind of, yeah, it helps us play better overall and we get used yeah. to higher pace. Now, that's great. And Glee and I appreciate the early spark link. So we actually got a preview of you guys in a scrim really right up until game time. So you came oh, in sick. plenty warmed up and that definitely <laughs> that definitely showed. Is that your normal routine is, is to go right from a scrim into a match like that? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, usually we just grab something 30 minutes before and then we actually start playing 15 minutes before because everyone's late. <laughs> and then we Take 10 before. minutes before <laughs> stop playing. So we get like five minutes. Yeah, well, like I talked about, the first three or four minutes of this match definitely went your way. It looked like you had been playing all night long, uh, and it just transitioned into this match really, really well as you got off to that hot start. So whatever you're doing, keep it up, because you got one more match to go, as you guys will be in the finals this Saturday, taking on the winner of this Scranton-Baton Rouge match that we've got coming up next. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out to Rapture, bro. He's a homie. He came in today. Pulled out a show. I'm proud of him, man. It was awesome. Thanks for playing yeah, with us. Thank you. Yeah, and he's got a fish on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like fish. Yeah. Well, congrats fish. to you all. Like I said, just an amazing match. 62 points, a 40-point victory. Uh, you started <laughs> off hot. You finished the match as well. So uh, go back and uh, take a look at the show that you just put on because we sure enjoyed it. Uh, with that, I thank you for your time, but we need do need to bounce over to this Eastern Conference Championship game. So uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the chat talking about who your next matchup is going to be against. Yeah. Good luck, Wait, team. Good luck. All right. Thanks, guys. Viewers, we will be right back with you. Scranton versus Baton Rouge after this break.
30 seconds. This one is loose in the destroyer zone. Collected by Saluda. Stunned out. Picked up by Game. Stunned out. Zenith with it. Is it? Try to, to clear it. Clear it out. 20 seconds. Game gets it back here. Game turning it around. Sends this one in off the floor. Gets it to Rosie Hope. Rosie has uh, Zenith pressuring. 13 seconds. Sending this one in. Stunned out. No. What a shielder from Acorn. Oh, no. That's the victory. That's the clock. What's the clock? That's it. That's it. In the last second, <laughs> the Orlando Cyclones come back 33 to 32. Are you kidding me? What? I've got nothing. You know, forget finals. What was that? What was that? No, no, not look at, no. Look at no. that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that camera. That was unbelievable. I cannot believe what just happened. I cannot believe what just happened. On that read.
Welcome back to NEPA TV and our continued coverage of AAA Conference Championship matches tonight. These are the semifinals. The Eastern Conference matchup, Scranton versus Baton Rouge is what we have on store for you next. I welcome you back, Glean. I welcome you back as well as we get ready for our second match of the night. Yeah, here we are sitting at uh, the number two seed in the conference versus the number five seed. Remember, the Scranton Royals upset the number one Ottawa Frost here in the Eastern Conference to be able to win their spot here in the finals matchup, and, uh, the Eastern Conference finals matchup. And uh, they did so in impressive fashion. Now, bear in mind, the Constellation's also a very, very strong team here, sitting at 11-3 and three on the season. Uh, with a great offense, they've looked so good down the stretch. And uh, with the likes of Giggity Gow, Toki, and ICE, and Cosmic here for their main four in the arena, they are looking to try and take a win here. Yeah, they are going to try to take the win. They're going up against the Scranton lineup that's going to see Duop, Mistake, Cool Whip, Babs, and Psy Chaotic on the roster tonight. So they will have five players available. We'll see which four gets the start. But both of these teams looking to advance to that championship game to take on the New Haven Ninjas. We just put on quite a show in our first matchup. Absolutely. They're, you know, a, a little reminder that it was 66 to 26. Just a, a crazy dominant performance from them as uh, the teams are getting readied up here. But uh, you know, you can't think of that right now. If you are either of these teams right now, you got to just focus on the game in front of you, focus on the players and the communication that you need to have as we hear the ready ups come through. The ready ups come through, and now we hear the countdown. We are going to get back to our echo coverage. Scranton Royals taking on Baton Rouge for the Eastern Conference Championship and a right to play in the AAA Finals. It is a headbutt here from the Constellations first. It did not go favorably for them at first, but Toki up to Cosmic with a fast two points on the board. Good little play there, despite the headbutt not being too favorable. Yeah, very aggressive play there. Impressed with the crisp passing there. Only seven seconds on that first goal. Once they got possession of the disc, it was two crisp passes, and then a shot puts their first two points on the board in a very fast fashion. Babs now over to Dwup here for the first rollout from the Scranton Royals, just missing the hands of the teammate there. Cool Whip will get the recovery and just hands it back to Mistaka. A nice little handoff on the reset. Uh, Dwup now handling this one on the side, looking at a couple of passes, tries to send it up to a teammate. Nick cannot hit them. There is now two players diving out. Babs here handling on the side, tries to take the shot, but good stop there by Toki getting the grab. Oh, great grab there by Mistaka, but stunned out all the same. And Toki now with the slap means that it is still in this area. Cosmic gets a good grab and uh, clears this one through onto the orange side of the arena. Giggity Gow now tracking this one down. Tries to get it to a teammate, but instead off the inside of that upper trench. And now the clear through here from the Royals. They have a couple players. Now trying to get to this disc. Stake gets off the shield. Oh, what a save there by Cosmic. Gets the grab. Now Icy here on the ceiling handling this. Sends it across and down and uh, looks for a shot. Can't quite hit it. Bouncing around and now a flick out here by Mistake means that uh, neither team has been able to score in the past little bit. Yeah, and that chain was right where it needed to be, but an errant bounce there. The disc just not where the chain needed it to be, so they walk away without the points, but it was a good offensive attack, and they had the offensive stack. Down on that side, just couldn't get a hand on the disc. They're going to have another chance for a clear here, and they've got a stack working towards that far side, too. Oh, good pickup here by the Royals to turn it right back around. They're looking uh, at a disc inside of that blue zone. Cosmic, good tap to deny uh, an offensive push for now as Dwop gets stunned as well. The stun's being so critical in this game so far. Another stun on Toki means that it gets turned right back over into the hands of Cosmic now. Uh, the clear coming through means and it's back on the orange side. And uh, just a continuous fight for this disc. No one really able to find a, a secure uh, holding onto it or a secure possession is now a uh, cosmic will get the grab here on the top side and now clear this one right back through here for the uh, for the constellations is now Toki here on the side. Look for the dunk in and gets another two points on the board. Finally, after two minutes of play, we get another goal. Yeah, a lot of back there. We saw that first goal come in just seven seconds, but 
after that first goal, over two minutes there to get our second goal of the match as both teams try and settle into their offensive set. Clears, not necessarily where they need to be, not totally clean, uh, but that time Toki able to get the hand on the disc in the bubble and bring it in for that slam dunk. They're now up four to nothing three minutes into the game. Yeah, and I should preface uh, what I said before of finally, it, you know, I'm coming off of that really fast paced game of uh, from the previous one and expecting scores to come in at every second is just like that. Doki hits a three to bring him up here by seven. Uh, but certainly a, a more defensive game of uh, scrambling for possession and trying to fight back and forth is definitely a very interesting game as well. Yeah, you're right. Both of these teams playing already talked about the number of stuns. It has been very uh, hotly contested in the midfield in particular as both teams look to try and gain that possession and try and get into a proper offensive set, which the Scranton uh -oh. team is going to get to do here. But they have a turnover that sends it back to the orange bubble and the stack is where it needs to be. Icy that time able to get a hand on the disc. They've now got their lead up 9-0. And a beautiful pick by Toki. I actually do very much like this timeout here. I presume this was taken by the Scranton Royals, if we can get muted to confirm that. Um, to confirm that it was the Royals that took this timeout. But, uh, you know, this this team uh, here on the Constellations has been super hot uh, coming out of this. That defensive play uh, kind of took the, uh, the air out of them as we do get confirmation that it was the Royals taking the timeout. So good to try and reset the mental here uh, as, as we see uh, this timeout come through. Uh, you know, that last play, Toki with a fantastic steal, just knew where the disc was going and got the hands on it, uh, meant that they could turn around into an offense possession and uh, just a good good awareness to take the time out before things spiral out of control. Yeah, I like that. We saw in the first matchup, New Haven jumped out to an 11 nothing lead, and, and the Scottsdale Slither just really struggled to ever come back from that. So I think it's wise here early. Things are working really well for the Constellations. Grand Royals can now talk about what they've seen in the first four minutes of play and look to make some adjustments here in the second half of the quarter before things get any further out of hand. Absolutely. That's kind of the biggest thing that you need to do is just uh, be aware of exactly how you're going to make those adjustments and uh, be aware of what exactly needs to be adjusted in order to do so. As now uh, they come out with this rollout once again, and Babs is looking to handle this disc, sends it across over here to Mistake, now going to look uh, to approach this with a little bit more time. They send this reset back here to Babs on the backside, gets it up to Dwup here on the floor. Dwup now looking at uh you know a four four defenders all the, already back tries to drive in oh good save there from cosmic to deny that one is now uh handled here on the backside by giggity sends a deep clear in to that orange bubble and uh it will be a teammate of the royals their first picked up here now by cool whip in that midfield taken here by uh a teammate but already stunned out as toki now gets the grab toki looking to try and get a clear uh Cannot find it all the way through, so a nice little pickup there by Mistake it means that uh, the Royals will retain possession here on the blue side. We'll get it across here to Mistake. Back across to Dwup. Dwup now looking across to Mistake. Nice little two-man game to work this disc up the floor. No! Oh, good headbutt, but oh, Babs can't find the bounce off the backboard. And a uh, huge miss there as now this one gets turned around here for uh, the Constellations picked up here by Mistake. Royals still trying to find their first couple of points on the board if they can. Dwup now looking uh, at a couple of crosses. Tries to hit one down low. Babs, Babs up to Mistake, and there it is. Great cut there by Mistake. Yeah, great cut and, and end a series of very crisp passes. I like how aggressively they brought that disc forward. Three passes forward, sets up Mistake off of the Babs assist. We now have the Royals on the board with their first two points. Indeed, and now we will see the first rollout here from uh, the Baton Rouge Constellations as the send down here to Cosmic from Icy uh, is good on the first pass. They send it across to Giggity and working their way up the floor, opt for the reset and will just slow things down a little bit as Icy handling it here on the backside is going to look for a cross here to the pack block to Giggity now. Uh, again, looking to try and get to, get this one down low, but misses the pass, and instead Mistake will get the clear all the way out. That bounce could be good. No, it's been picked up here by Cool Whip to secure a two, and uh, just like that, once they break the ice, the Royals are starting to find a little bit of momentum. Yeah, and Cool Whip really getting involved, was part of that offensive set that got their first two points of the game, and now puts that one in for her two points, bringing their total up to four. They're back within two scores here with 90 seconds to go in the quarter. All right, Icy now handling this one at the nest. Not have too much pressure, so we'll just wait this one out. Gets the pass across to Cosmic, and now moving this 
forward. It's a pass down to Toki. Toki uh, gets it back to a teammate just in time. Back over to Cosmic. Going to send this one across top for Giggity and gets the two in. A nice little set of passes there for the Constellations to secure two. Yeah, I really like that decision by Toki. Rather than pressing the bubble, look to reset that one back to Cosmic, who was coming up the far hand side, and then finds the cross right where it needs to be. They've stretched the lead back to seven. All right, so now the Royals handling this disc. They get it over to Mistake on a little relay play, but can't get the second pass off. So uh, this one gets turned around in the favor of the Constellations. They have a player already down there. Toki trying to get there first does get there. Sends a cross pass, but just behind the teammates. So instead, the Royals pick this one up and Mistake handling it here on the wall. Has a teammate stacked with them as well. So they're going to look to try and track this one down. Perhaps it will just bounce loose and uh, instead favorably into the hands of Duop. Now rotating, look to try and find a cross pass but stunned out by Giggity meaning that they will turn this one right back around and now it could be either team's disc as there are chains away it will be picked up here by Icy Ooh, just wide of the goal there on the shot so uh, perhaps it's a last second chance here for either team Toki now with the pickup means that uh, it will be retained here by the constellations up to Icy Icy on the shot no can't find it the bounce is also not good off the outside of the post and that will end our first quarter 11 to 4. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Honda. One man with four wheels strapped to a parallel twin engine. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Honda motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Ah, uh, you gotta love the stun, man. You gotta love the matchup that we're seeing here, Glean. This Eastern Conference Championship being played hard by both of these teams. What did you see there in the first quarter? You know, just looking at it, it's two teams that are all up in each other's faces, just stunning each other out at any given opportunity. Uh, we did see how getting off at the right foot on the right foot is a critical component to Echo Arena. Right there, with the first couple of scores, the Baton Rouge Constellations kind of secured their lead and uh, secured how that first quarter was going to go. Uh, we're able to continue to snowball that into a pretty good lead. And although the Royals were fighting back, they just could not get a, a good grasp of that quarter so far. Yeah, we talked about the number of stuns, 67 st total stuns between these two teams here in the first quarter. So coming out and playing oh aggressive style of defense, trying to break up those chains. Now, what can the Scranton Royals do to try and scratch their way into what is a seven point lead? That was a fantastic headbutt there from the Constellations. Icy tried for the three-point shot, couldn't hit it. Duop, good steal, or at least a tap out of the disc to deny the shot. Giggity now handling this one from Cosmic. Good steal there by Duop to turn this one around for the Royals. Now looking to try and track this one down. They have the teammate there. Duop on the other end. No, can't hit the shot. It's off the nest and uh, bouncing loose into Giggity's hands. Giggity clearing this one into uh, Cosmic's hands. Good pick there by Mistake. Boop shot on the way. No, off the cloud. And uh, now it's taken here by Toki on the blue side. Taken by Mistake on the orange. And uh, Dwup here on the cross. We'll look for the shot. There's the three. Uh, manages to find its way in there. And there is the famous, or rather infamous, 7-11 score that one Jucifer was looking for. Yeah, he's looking... He's looking for that 7-11 score and the Slurpee to go along with it. So there you have it, that three-pointer, a clutch shot there by the Royals. They've brought it back to within two scores here. That's a great way here to start the second quarter. Toki now across the Cosmic. Cosmic up towards Giggity. That's a nice little rollout there. 1v1, takes the backboard shot and secures it. The goalie had a great idea to dive out there, but just a better shot makes his way in. Yeah, goalie was coming out trying to pressure. Giggity recognized that and then finds the angle off of the backboard, puts that one in. Two points on the bounce shot, stretches the lead back to six. Joust advantage over to the Royals. All right, we see them come out of those tunnels and looking at this kind of relay play. They get it over to Cool Whip. They get it down to two. Dwup and uh, a 1v2 here, perhaps. Dwup trying to find a cross pass, could not get past that one defender. Cosmic good done there and good leech to be able to deny that one giggity now looking at a cloud shot just misses the angle for it so it will just be inside of that orange bubble good pick up here by toki to secure another two in the favor of the constellations 
Yeah, nice goal there. They won the race into the bubble. They had three players in position. Defensive stack was trying to get back, but not before. That one goes in with Toki and Icy going to work, stretching this lead out to nine, just under six minutes to play in the half. All right, now Babs handling this again for the Royals. Mistake across to Dwup. Dwup and looking for a pass up here to Cool Whip. Cool Whip going to look for a back pass here. Perhaps, perhaps she'll drive herself. No, the steal from Giggity. It denies another shot. And how fantastic has this guy been on the defensive end with those steals? Uh, now clearing this one over into that orange side bubble. Giggity looking to light up the three. Good save by Dwup. A uh, bit of an ambitious shot there from Giggity, but uh, a good save nonetheless. Is now Mistake will get this one sent deep and uh, multiple players trying to get into that goal zone. It uh, will be a pickup here from Dwup to secure a two and bring them back within six. And Dwup now with five points on the match. Starting to heat up a little bit and continuing to keep this thing close. Royals definitely within striking distance as we now see the joust advantage go Baton Rouge's way. Yeah, and we've seen that they've had some quicker rollouts. They've had some slower rollouts. It'll be interesting to see how they switch up the pace this time as they send it across to Cosmic. Cosmic now going to go across to Toki and uh, immediate quick fast forward here. Pass forward to a teammate Giggity here on the wall. Trying to bounce this one across the Toki does get there successfully, and they immediately back it out. Smart to do so as that there was there was that defender coming in to stun, and I see now handling this one on the side a little bit slower as they break down this defense. They get him to jump out. Toki here on the ceiling, looking for the cross. Oh, Cosmic getting stunned. Good read there by the defense to deny that shot, and uh, now it will be a race for this one. Drop now long three on the way. No, cannot hit it, and uh, instead the bounce is still favorable for the Royals. If only for a moment as Cosmic now gets the stun and the clear. Ooh, taking a bounce instead. So Dwup handling this one. Now gets it across to Cool Whip. Cool Whip looking to drive in. Ooh, could not hit the shot. Just a bit high. And uh, this disc still loses players over shoot it. Dwup <laughs> misses the disc. So uh, now it's still in his hands as he does get the leech. But it uh, could have been dangerous there for a second. Now to get this one across to Babs. Babs looking to go back to Mastake. And a nice little combo there. One of the favorite things I'd like to see from... Uh, from this triple a season so far is just how mistake and babs have developed as a combo here brutus yeah and that combo pays off with two points there but you're right it was a really nice uh cut made and the the pass was where it needed to be setting up that goal they brought it back within four points here so really nice set there and let's see if they can continue with that yeah i see now handling this one on that nest once again goes down to Cosmic. Cosmic forward to Giggity. Here's that faster look that we've seen before from the Constellations. Giggity driving in 1v1. A nice easy shot there on the lower side to secure two. Yeah, nice goal there. That goal only took 13 seconds, so Icy handled that disc off of Nest. They work it up the far side to get it to Giggity Gal, and Giggity Gal comes out on the winning end of a 1v1 against the goalie. All right, so how will the Royals respond to that faster play? They send it over to Mistake. Mistake down to uh, a teammate there. Gets it over to Dwup. That's reminiscent of the ace play. I think it might be the ace play, actually, is now. Uh, Dwup is handling this one here on the side, now looking for a couple of crosses. Has two players laterally uh, adjacent to him, but, oh, cannot hit that one in. Oh, that shot might be on. No, instead off the nest, and uh, we'll just bounce it loose in that bottom side of the bubble. The shot in from Icy. Secure a three, and they're up by a nine. Yeah, five unanswered now from the Constellations as they built that lead all the way up to nine, like you said. Uh, Icy, who's who's not been afraid to shoot, connects on that three-pointer there uh, and gets them back to a 20-11 to 11 score here as we go in the last two minutes of the half. Babs over to Mistake. Mistake forwarding this one down into that bubble zone. The bounce, ooh, just past the hands of Icy, but does manage to get the block off and the clear. Babs now handling this one, tries to get a pass off. It will fall into Mistake's hands off the bounce and sending this one forward to Dwup. Dwup now looking, oh, blue the handle off the floor. So a turnover here and Cosmic on the recovery will send this one deep into that orange side. Now a pick up here from Giggity means that they have an opportunity. They will back this one out for a moment as they look to try and draw that defense to get Dwup to bite. So they move this one forward into Icy's hands. Icy now backing up once again, trying to get that defense to get outside the bubble. Over to Giggity now. Giggity with the drive. Oh, what a save there by Babs. Now Icy here handling this one on the ceiling. Tries to get it down. Mistake, good grab. As the goalie was being harassed in this one in the midfield. And Toki with the pickup for another offensive push by the Constellations. The shot. Oh, what a save there. 
Someone from the Royals got back and managed to get a hand on that one to deny it and now cleared back into the mid zone and multiple players tracking this one down. It is a race for it. Icy there first on the clear through now as it, the bounce finds its way to Toki Toki, forwarding it up to Giggity Giggity, immediately stunned. And uh, as, although it is in that orange side, Toki now looking for a long three, cannot find it. The bounce not good as well. And this one back into that uh, kind of trap area, that kind of tunnel area. Dwup gets stunned out. It will be a pickup here by Icy. Icy now handling this one here on the ceiling, off the bounce. Looks at the pass down low to Toki. Toki trying to find another pass up. Cosmic, Cosmic looking at a shot as the goalie is harassed. Toki off the bounce. We'll get the two. Yeah, good follow there by Toki. Cosmic tried to send that one in. They're really being aggressive and harassing the goalie and, and trying to keep that goalie distracted. Cosmic shot just off, but Toki in the right place. Coming into the bubble to get that bounce off of the backboard and put that in to stretch their lead out to 11 to end out our half here. So 22 to 11 will be the score going into the second half, which we will bring you after a short word from our sponsors. Hold on a minute. We hear that right? Dodge is making an electric car. We're talking hypothetical, right? Surely you jest. Dodge? You mean the people who devised the legendary 426 Hemi and sunk it into a sublime missile? You mean the Dodge that created the Hellcat Red Eye and the most powerful muscle car in the world? Makers of the 840 horsepower wheel standing demon? Why on God's green earth would Dodge ever build an electric car? Anybody? Any thoughts out there? Hello? For those looking to claim this week's NFT, head on over to www.nepavrpro.com slash NFT and fill out the claim form. In order to complete the claim form, you will need the secret password, which is Pro Series. The deadline to submit the claim form is 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday, September 25th. And again, that secret password is Pro Series. We welcome you back to our big St. Charles Auto and Motorsports halftime show. We have seen a very good match so far here, Glean. These teams playing very well, putting in tons of effort. It's just been that the scoring has been there for the Constellations. The Royals have had some. They have managed to keep it close, but haven't quite been able to answer as we went through that first half. What do you see here taking a look at the stats and the play so far? Yeah, just taking a look by the numbers, we see that uh, Dwup here, the leader or the points leader for the Baton or for the Scranton Royals, is sitting at that five points, the four points for Mistake, and the two points here for Cool Whip. And uh, Mistake already fingerprints all over this game. You can see there four, two, two, and one across the scoreboard, and uh, it has been rather good for him. And although, <laughs> although looking at the other side, you look at the likes of Toki with fifty-one stuns in the game so far. My oh my. Um, seven points, three assists, two saves, two steals to go along with it. Uh, it has just had a, a massive impact on this game so far. Yeah, stunning has definitely had a lot to do with it. 142 total stuns between these two teams. You mentioned the 51 stuns there for Toki. That's actually the stun total for the entire Scranton Royals lineup. So uh, Toki getting in there, being disruptive, breaking up those chains, and you know really putting themselves in position to score. I noticed on a few of the Constellations uh, kind of breakaway plays, as soon as they get a, a uh, an interception or a steal, they're immediately looking looking to stun out the Scranton Royals, try and break up those chains so that they can get down to the orange bubble uh, and and at least have a numbers advantage, if not an open goal opportunity. And so far, that seems to be working and is a big reason why they've got 22 points here in the first half. Absolutely. And if you're here on the Royal side, you know, it's just about not letting things slip away. Good of them to take the time out early in the first half when they were down 9-0. They started to come back. Their offenses looked pretty stable for the most part in that first half. And going into the second half, you got to think about, okay, gonna how are we going to shut down this, uh, this offense here from the likes of the... 
uh, the Baton Rouge constellations because uh, you know you have so many threats to watch out for. You got to watch out for Giggity. You got to watch out for Toki. You got to watch out for Icy. And although Cosmic, I don't think has played in very many games as kind of one of those players in the arena, has always kind of been there in the tunnels and now is making a, a certainly a very important appearance here with the uh, the two points, the six assists already in the game and the two saves has had a very a very strong impact on this game so far. Yeah, it definitely has, uh, and and has led to you know a a shot uh, advantage, twenty two shots taken uh, for the Baton Rouge Constellations, vice thirteen for the Scranton Royals. So uh, what they're doing on that defensive end is creating those shot opportunities, and obviously they've been able to turn those into points. You talked about uh, what Babs and Mastake were able to do on the offensive end, though, uh, starting to get together that combination and set up some high percentage scoring opportunities inside the bubble. So you got to think that's going to be a big part of the strategy for the Royals here going into the second half. Absolutely. I want to look for Babs and Mastake. They are a dynamic duo with the stack as well. And I want to see them uh, really use their speed and quite honestly abuse their speed in a lot of situations. I know that they are a fast combo and uh, should they get a breakaway, you can almost expect them to, you can expect them to score almost always uh, down the floor. And, should, you know, that could be a great way to start building momentum back into this game. Uh, I could also expect Quip uh, has been a little bit quiet tonight and she is always one to pop off both with uh excitement and cheering on her teammates but also inside uh the bubble as a striker she is a phenomenal shooter uh in that zone as well so things could definitely start rolling their way should they get the hot hand it's just a matter of getting to that point uh, and really starting to build on that momentum well, we are going to get the answer to all of those questions here as the second half is ready to kick off and we bring you back to the arena for the second half of our Eastern Conference Championship. Oh, a fast headbutt here from uh, the side of the Constellations mean that they were on the disc first, but an immediate stun out means that Babs is now handling this one for the Scranton Royals. Down over to Dwup. Dwup now with the rotation will find himself inverted. Looking at a shot. No, good steal there from Toki. Uh, gets this one turned around and now looking to try and send this one in. Oh, good pick up there from Giggity and they will secure the two there. Yeah, two more points stretching their lead out to 13 and a really good start there for the Constellations. Grand Royals now joust advantage. Let's see what they came up with at halftime strategy-wise and how they choose to roll out here on their offense. Indeed, and uh, you know, Toki is a fantastic player, but I must critique him that there has been a couple of times where we have seen him get picked and ooh, another pick right there. The shot open, Toki with the three puts them up here by 16. Yeah, we saw the, the Constellations get off to a quick start in the match, led to a timeout about halfway through the first quarter for the Royals. They've now given up two early points here in the first minute of play. If the Royals don't get an answer here soon, you got to wonder if they're going to take another timeout here to keep this thing 16 points still well within reach. But so far, haven't found any success on the offensive end here in the second half as that shot is just wide, but they do maintain the offensive possession. Oh, the pass over to Dwarf. The idea was there, just couldn't get it. As now Mastaki handles this. Down to Kuwip. Kuwip with the shot. No. Toki, good save. Grabbed here again by Kuwip. This. Coming. I mean, it just could not. It is actually, sorry, in that top trap area. And now Giggity handling this one. We'll try and find a clear through. Does get it through all the way. And Kuwip on the backside with the quick recovery. Now over to Babs. Babs over to Mistake. Oh, good hiding there from Icy to deny that. And now we'll walk. One forward looking at perhaps an open goal, but no, just as the goalie gets back, we'll opt to continue to just walk this one up, take some time, and look for a couple of passes. Very wise to do so. Icy now across to Cosmic. Cosmic here on the shoulder. We'll get it, or the, sorry, the cloud. We'll get it over to Icy. Uh, just a great play there. I didn't quite get all the call outs <laughs> properly, but it was Giggity there on the assist. Uh, it was Cosmic to then Giggity to then Icy. Yeah, stringing together a couple of passes, a minute total in scoring that goal, but a nice offensive set there to finish things off. They stretch this lead out to 18, and the Royals again are just looking for some momentum. They've shown a couple of bursts at times, but here in the second half, struggling to find something that works on the offensive end as they bring it up, and Cool Whip handles it on the near side. Uh, Masaki trying to get it over there. Uh, 
trying to get it does get to the disc and uh now babs here on the backside gets it back up to cool whip cool whip over to mistake no just a bit high on the pass so uh pick it up here by dwarf somehow but gets still gets stunned out here by toki now looking for the clear through the bounce uh is uh, not favorable for them as it falls into that trap area icy now on the pickup will look for a shot the three-pointer not online but it will be giggity here on the back side trying for three of his own just a bit high so misaki with the pickup another grab here toki no can't hit the shot either so a number of shots that could have been had were missed there by the constellations Dwarf now inverting here once again going to look to try and move this one forward uh gets stunned out here by cosmic uh managed to fall into babs's hands and babs going back to drop Dwarf over to a teammate oh cool with the good steal uh but it is still in Toki's hands regardless and now this one goes right back over to that orange side uh, i will be cosmic good headbutt uh, to deny any sort of grab from Dwup and uh, Icy trying to get to this disc does get the set off to Toki there on the back side. Toki forwarding this one up to uh, a teammate over to Icy now, but Kuwip already knew where that disc was going. Cosmic knew where that was going too uh, and preemptively moved to get that stun. And now Icy with a shot will bring that one in on the assist from Cosmic. Yeah, Icy gets another two points there. They've stretched this lead all the way out to 20. Grand Royals so far not able to string anything together on the offensive end. They're going to have a joust advantage here, but they've got to find something that works. Getting them onto the offensive side and a high scoring opportunity. Dwup has had a hot hand. He is leading in scoring right now. Takes the long kind of low percentage three there. But I think between Cool Whip and, or sorry, Mistake and Babs, if they can get that bubble offense going again, oh. or if they can free up Dwup for some higher percentage shots, they're going to have a chance to crawl into this lead. Uh, but I mean, how do you do that against goalies that have been so great? Cosmic and Icy both kind of taking on that defensive role there. Uh, and the goal is that shot just wide. Cosmic almost had it through three goalies, but uh, not able to fully finish. And Mistake handling this one now. Looking for the shot. No, Toki disruptive once again. Gets a nice little pick there in the midfield. The shot coming through. Icy on the back end gets a steal. Oh, that shot there from Dwup just could not fall uh, for the three. Babs on a recovery means they will retain possession of the six. Mistake now looking to drive this one in. Mistake, no, another save from Icy. Unbelievable as now uh, this one gets cleared out here by the constellations. And, uh, you know, despite so many opportunities, the, uh, the Scranton Royals just cannot get uh, these shots to fall because the goalies have been so phenomenal so far. And good stun there from Cosmic means that it's an open three. A great shot there to put them up here by 23. Yeah, but it really goes back to the defense. Those were some of the best scoring opportunities we've seen for the Royals so far in this game. Uh, but the goal is just really getting it done. Icy with a, a fantastic stop there and ends up leading to the offensive possession that, that, that turns into those, those uh, excuse me, three points. But it really all started on a defensive end, and they've been very, very solid tonight in denying the Scranton Royals scoring opportunities. Yeah, as they take... As the Scranton Royals once again take another time out here in the half that they are allotted, they're just to talk things over, try and figure things out. You know, uh, things are just not going their way, and it's really, really tough for them to get things going. And I, it, it, a matter of just keeping that mental up right now as you try and find a way back into this one. Yeah, and it's tough to do that when when defenses are playing at such a high level. Uh, going back to the uh, current count on the Stunny Award. Toki with 80 stuns in this match. And it's not like Toki's just going around doing nothing but stunning. Toki actually has a statistic in every single category right now. 10 points, 3 assists, 4 saves, 6 steals to go along with those 80 stuns. Absolutely yeah. unbelievable. And it just has to be so frustrating for the Scranton Royals who are trying to get something done offensively. And they're being disrupted, if not by stuns, then by saves. Yeah, if you told me that Toki had 80 stuns and we're not even all the way through a third quarter along with six deals, I, I would have called you a liar had I not seen it with my own eyes. But there it is right in front of me as now Dwup will pass this one across to a teammate. Cannot find the connection there. So uh, Dwup still able to recover and get a tap across. Misaki tracking this one down. Gets the hands and sends it across to Cool Whip on kind of the relay play that now works out. Ooh, Dwup just missing that one as uh, it was just out of his hands a little bit far in the pass. And now this one is loose and picked up here by the constellations icy handling this one will look for a clear through uh on the lower side they have giggity there with the pickup giggity oh the shot off the boot so uh still picked up here by giggity uh and is looking for a cross pass in hits icy icy looking at a dunk in and gets it over top of cool whip to secure the two
And here we are getting right back into the action. We still got a minute to play here in the third quarter, but that disc is going to be turned over off of the quarterback's initial throw, and Giggity Gal puts it in for another three points, stretching this lead out to 28. Yeah, impressive little shot there from Giggity uh, to secure that one, and uh, an even more impressive read there on the defensive end to be able to secure that. My, uh, they are just rolling right now, and uh, now a pickup here from Babs. Ooh, gets stunned out here by Cosmic, so a turnover in the end. Toki gets a hand on it. Another uh, Scranton Royal gets a hand on it, if only for a moment, but back into the hands of Giggity now as he tracks this one down, sends a reset back to Icy, and... Uh, they once again retain possession are going to look for a, a last second shot here probably as they send it across to Cosmic. Cosmic now going down low to Toki. Toki looking at a shot. Uh, perhaps, yes, we'll get it into the side pocket there and Toki will bring them above 40, a 30 point lead here in the conference finals. Yeah, nice job of offensive spacing there by the Constellations. Toki with the disc under shield there. They had a player both to the left and the right of the goal that I think was distracting for the goalie. Toki able to take advantage of that, sink that one in, beating the goalie for those two points, stretching this lead all the way out to 30 as we go into our final intermission of the night. One American with a burning desire to save the world from high prices. He is the stuntman that saved the world. He is looking to destroy high prices. A man that brought the world together because of his love for Kawasaki. One man strapped to a 2021 Terex KRX 1000. The stuntman that saved the world. Get your favorite Kawasaki motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides today at Holzhauer Pro Motorsports in Nashville, Illinois. Welcome back to NEPA TV and our semi-final coverage here of the AAA series. We saw the New Haven Ninjas stamp their card from the Western Conference into the finals. Baton Rouge Constellations have a really strong pitch right now to try and meet them, but there are still eight minutes to play, and the Scranton Royals are going to have to bring an all-out attack to try and eat into a 30-point lead here with eight minutes to play. Indeed, as they come out of the tunnels, it will be a headbutt here from the Constellations looking to, to secure this one fully. Icy with the shot. No, can't find the three. Will find the two regardless on the little dunk there. And someone calls Shaquille O'Neal because Icy Hot in the house. There you go. Icy Hot now leading all scorers with 15. Has been very active throughout the game. Very consistent for them. Had some shots that fell errant early in the first quarter, but has really found his groove. And now with 15 points, stretches this lead out to 32. Mistake handling this for the Royals. Tries to get the pass down. Icy, good read there. Gets the pick. And now we'll handle this one on the backside. Sends it across to Toki. Toki getting stunned out here by Babs. And now Mistake with the disc for the Royals. Sends this one up to Dwup. Dwup looking at a three-point shot. And that one is an easy make for him as he brings the total up to 14 for the Royals. Yeah, and the defensive play again sets up the goal. Mistake finding Dwup up on the ceiling there. Dwup does make that one look easy. Sinks that three-pointer to bring their total up to 14. The lead back to 29 now for the Constellations. I see now handling this one on that QB rollout. Gets it across to Cosmic across the top side. Ooh, trying to hit Giggity just a bit behind him. So Toki will actually be the receiver of this in the end. And we'll look at a couple of crosses. Ops to continue to hold onto the disc as they try and break down this defense. Good stun there on Mastake as they look to try and break down further. Toki now going to send this up to Giggity. No, just high of the teammate. And Babs on a fast recovery will try and get this one cleared out. Does get it through, but the stack already stunned, meaning that uh, it could be anybody's disc down the floor. It will be Toki there first. Toki now looking for a clear through tries to get it to a teammate it will just bounce into that trap area off the tunnel so drop now look for a shot oh great grab there from toki now looking to clear this one deep into that orange side they have players all the way down the floor and toki sends that one in nice and easy to give them a 45 to 14 a big lead 
Yeah, a big lead, just continued outstanding play for Toki. Jucifer, I know you're keeping track. Toki now with 90 stuns, six minutes to play, triple digits, not out of reach. My goodness. Can you imagine if we break uh, triple digit stuns in the conference finals? Absolutely ridiculous. It's now Giggity's holding on to this one. Tries to get it across the icy. That was a great look there. Uh, if they had the kind of diving cut in, but they could not secure it. And Cool Whip handling this one for the Royals will look for a clear through. Hits uh, a teammate up there. Hits Mistake. Uh, as now going to walk this one up, doesn't really have a teammate in the area, so we'll look to try and back this one up, gets it over to Babs. Babs getting stunned out here by Toki, and now looking to try and get the clear through, gets it down into that orange side at the very least. Cosmic there with the hands, taking the three-point shot, easy secure, puts them up here by 34. 34 points, things really clicking now for the Constellations. After I watched that Ninjas game, I thought, boy, what team wants to play them? Well, right now it looks like Baton Rouge is going to be up to the task. Still five minutes to go in this one, but stretching that lead all the way out to 34 and things just really working for the Constellations in the arena tonight. Absolutely. My, oh my, Toki with another pick and another three. I mean, this guy, uh, plus add another stun on for him. That makes for what, 94 now? Uh, 95. And, 95 is the count. 95, sorry. We're, we're five say, magical say, stuns away. Triple digits are inevitable at this point for uh, Toki's stun total. Dunny award looks well in hand. <laughs> he may walk away with another award as well at the end of this because he has just been electric in this arena. We have not necessarily uh, called him out as, you know, a, a player in, during the color casting, but he has just been all over this arena doing so much work. Now, Cosmic looking to drive this one in. Another stun for Toki and another slam here for Cosmic for another two. Yeah, another slam home, and, and coming into the second half, it really looked like the Royals had found something. It had found a little bit of momentum at the end of the second quarter there and found some offense that was working, but it has just been shut down. Uh, when it's not a stun, it's an interception or a steal. Um, really, the defensive end, I think, is where the Constellations have set this apart because they're creating turnovers and turning them into points in a hurry, and that's why they find themselves up here 53-14 to 14 with three and a half to go. And Toki has hit that magical 100 stun mark here in about the three and a half minute mark in the fourth quarter. Icy now looking to try and take a shot. Ooh, good stop there by Cool Whip to deny it. And uh, Mistake now with the pickup is going to look for a clear through. Bounces it off the wall and gets it deep into that orange side. That might just be a shot. Oh my, almost hit the full court off the wall there. Uh, cool Whip is now going to get the pickup and gets it over to Psychaotic for a slam dunk in to secure the two. Yes, yeah, Psychaotic taking that one from Cool Whip and slamming that one home. Two more points on the board brings their total up to 16. 102 stuns now for Toki. Still three minutes to play. What I've learned, if nothing else tonight, is that I never want to be in an arena with Toki. <laughs> Toki versus Jucifer would be a very interesting matchup. As great shot there from Astake. Credit the, uh, the defensive play there. Got the stun on the QB and the shot through, and that's, uh, you know, a bit of juice uh, in their veins, but unfortunately just not at the right place or the right time for it. Yeah, but a good goal nonetheless, and you got to love the Scranton Royals playing this one all the way wire to wire. They're continuing to bring the attack and look for those shot opportunities that time. The three-pointer is successful to get some more points on the board as they now look to recover on defense. Toki, who else trying to work off of the near side boot? Oh, speaking of which, Tokyo, another pickup, actually taken here by Giggity, now shoots in the two in 55 to 19. Uh, you know, I did not expect the conference finals to both be such dominant wins, but, uh, you know, these teams, these winning teams showing out here that they absolutely want to be a part of that finals and are really trying to intimidate each other in a way. Uh, yes, indeed. They both came out uh, swinging tonight. Really, from the get-go, we saw both of those teams jump out to early leads and then never look back. But the defensive pressure that the Constellations have brought, if they can bring that kind of effort against the Ninjas, it's going to be quite a matchup indeed. Breezebo, I see you. The AAA championship is going to be fire. <laughs> going to be a great great matchup because both of these teams are playing at an extremely high level uh here tonight and i would expect nothing more or nothing less excuse me in the championship 
Absolutely, as now we see rollout here from those Royals. Once again, Mistake sending this one in deep for a teammate. Already Giggity there on the pickup. Going to send this one in for Cosmic. Cosmic looking to try and maybe line up a cross pass. It will go a bit wide, so Babs a nice little easy tap out there to deny any sort of offensive push. Mistake going to look for a bounce off the wall on the shot. Oh, it was on its way in, but Babs will clean it up anyway. And it is going to go in for another three points there for the Scranton Royals. So 57-22 uh, is where we sit here. Looks like we'll have one more offensive possession for the Constellations with about 30 seconds left to play. Indeed. And now we'll see the rollout here from the Constellations as they will take a little bit of a victory lap here. Toki now walking this one up. Looking for the three. Oh, good save there from Babs. Uh, Toki still gets the pick up here. Now they're trying to time this goalie stun, but... Toki missing the shot. Uh, it's still into the hands of Icy here on the back end. And we'll try and find a couple of passes in. Maybe we'll look for a three as they're definitely still stunning that goalie out. Oh, great little move there from Saika to deny Icy from any sort of potential extra shot. And that will secure the game there. 57 to 22, a 35 point win for the side of the Baton Rouge Constellations. A very nice win there. Walking into the finals with a lot of confidence is going to be the Baton Rouge Constellations. Congrats to the Scranton Royals putting on a great show tonight and really just being here, earning that win earlier over the top seeded Ottawa squad to even find their way here into the semifinal matchup. Put up a great, great effort, but the Constellations defense was just too much to overcome tonight. The scoring just wasn't there, and you got to give the credit to the Constellations for what they were bringing on the defensive end. We've been talking a lot about stuns. Uh, looking at the final game stats, we have got 290 stuns between these two teams. Uh, so a very, very aggressive uh, play for sure. And that's with over 100 stuns from none other than Toki uh, to kind of be the stopper for the team that just never let the Scranton Royals get in any kind of offensive rhythm. Indeed. And it was just a, a crazy performance overall. And uh, just, you know, taking a look further at the stats, I mean, it was a great overall game from the team. I mean, we look at the likes of Icy with 15. You look at Giggity with 13, Cosmic with 12. I mean, everyone performed on this team. It was just a matter of, uh, you know, it was just a matter of Toki really getting so many stuns there towards the end and uh, just so many steals. He was lights out there on the defensive end along with the rest of the team. Um, but him as the leader on the defensive end was so impressive to watch. Uh, impressive indeed. Double-digit scoring for all four of the Constellation players, so they're playing a great team game. Toki's stat line, absolutely unbelievable. I don't think we can talk too much about it. Not only leading all scorers, but also six assists, seven steals, five saves to go along with those 111 stuns. So it's not like Toki's just out there leeching and looking to get stuns. Getting involved on the offensive and the defensive end, that is a really impressive stat line when you see those kind of numbers in all five columns. All right. And with that, uh, I mean, I, for me, I, I think the Stuntman Award definitely goes to Toki here. It's, you know, I think we've kind of implied that with our talks, and, and I think you've pretty basically outright said it at this point. Toki, uh, for, for me, very much wins this one. Just a crazy performance overall. Yeah, crazy performance. The Stunny Stuntman. It has happened. Uh, Holtzauer Auto and Motorsports Stuntman Trophy going to Toki. Well deserved. Icy, Giggity Gal. I mean, really, all four of these players just playing so well together as a team. But Toki, if I'm looking at an individual effort, is a very easy call in this one. Uh, so we will get to see these Baton Rouge Constellations one more time. They will be playing those New Haven Ninjas in the finals as I listen from you to let me know if we're going to get a chance to interview these Constellations. Fantastic. We have got an interview lined up, so we are going to take a brief intermission. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back with tonight's winners, the Baton Rouge Constellations.
And welcome back to NEPA TV's post-game coverage. We are joined, of course, by Glean. Glean, welcome. But by the Baton Rouge Constellations, the Eastern Conference AAA champions who are going to be moving on to face the New Haven Ninjas in the finals. We saw a great, great matchup. Glean, can't wait to hear what the players have to say. Muted, let's bring them in. Abs. Cool. Oh, and giggity gal, Icy hey and Toki, welcome to our post game interview. Really appreciate your time. Appreciate the show that you put on in that matchup. You jumped out to an early lead and never looked back. Giggity gal, what has this team playing at such a high level? Um, essentially, we just play our own role. We play selfless um, echo. So that's basically what allows us to win. Well, and we saw that reflected in the stats. All four players scoring in double digits here tonight, so definitely an all-around team effort that was very, very impressive to watch. Uh, everybody playing just really, really well. Uh, I do have to say the Stuntman Trophy and the Stunny Award, as Jusifer likes to call in the chat, went to Toki tonight. Toki, you were Woo! active, had stats registered in all categories, led all scores. Also led all stunners with, I believe it was 111 stuns. <laughs> what were you doing to be so active in the arena tonight? Wait, what happened? Oh, wait, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> wait, did you leave? Uh, you got disconnected. You got disconnected. Um, just, just, I'll relay what you're saying. Just say something. Uh, you got say disconnected. Say there we go. Oh, there he is. There he I don't know what happened. I just called myself like, this is what he was doing. Um... I don't know. I just like focus on stuns because, like, I don't know. It just worked this game. Like I was holding people back, so yeah, it, just, it worked on shutting down their offense and yeah, it just it left stuff. us like the opportunity to score, like down on their side, because we can hold them back. Yeah, it did and we talked throughout the match. Just really difficult for the Scran Royals to get any kind of offensive consistency going, uh, be it steals and saves or just those stuns and breaking up what they were doing on the offensive side was really, really effective. I see great match to you as well. Scoring throughout, you started off scoring in the first quarter and was still still scoring there in the fourth. How do you feel your role played into this victory? Um, I was playing all around. I was playing defensive, offensive, and I was. I was just having fun. Uh, well, it looked like a lot of fun, and winning 57-22 to 22 is indeed fun. So uh, congrats <laughs> to all of you, Giggity Gal. Congrats to you as the captain getting this team playing yes, at such sir. a high level. As you look at facing these New Haven Ninjas in the finals, uh, what are you thinking going into the next few days of prep and, and going into that match? Honestly, just play how we play, and then I think we're chill. Well, yeah, if you play as well as you did tonight, I could not be looking forward to that final more because it's going to be a great, great matchup. Uh, you guys were probably getting ready for this match, didn't catch it, but the New Haven Ninjas are playing pretty well uh, also, so I'm expecting a great matchup in those finals. Wish you guys all the luck in the world uh, and can't wait to see another great show as we close out this AAA season. Uh, so congrats, you've punched your ticket. You have won the Eastern Conference, uh, and you're going to go and play uh, for the overall series championship here on Saturday. So good luck to you. Thank you for your time with the interviews, and we'll see you Saturday. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Wait. All right, and thank you, Glean. Great job, as always, tonight. Crushing the play-by-play. -play. Thanks to Muted, who was running all of our cams, and thank you to our viewers. You are why we are here and why we are streaming. Hope you enjoyed tonight's matchups. We have got Pro Series semifinals coming your way tomorrow. Same time, 7 p.m. Central for the first match and then 8 p.m. Central for the second to see which pro teams will be facing off in the championship game on Saturday following this New Haven Ninjas Baton Rouge Constellations matchup. So thanks for being here, and we will be back tomorrow night with more playoff action coming your way. That's all I've got. See ya. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Peace. My wonder.
30 seconds. This one is loose in the destroyer zone. Collected by Saluda. Stunned out. Picked up by Game. Stunned out. Zenith with it. Is it? Trying to Try clear to it. it. Cleared out. 20 seconds. Game gets it back here. Game turning it around. Sends this one in off the floor. Gets it to Rosie Hope. Rosie has uh, Zenith pressuring. 13 seconds. Sending this one in. Stunned out. No. What a shield there from Acorn. Oh, no. That's the victory. That's What's the clock? What's the clock? That's it. That's it. In the last second, the Orlando Cyclones come back. 33 to 32. Are you kidding me? What? I've got nothing. You know, forget finals. What was that? What was that? No, <laughs> no, not look at, no, look at no. That. Put me on camera. <laughs> Put me on that. camera. That was unbelievable. I cannot believe what just happened. I cannot believe what just happened. On that read.